Welcome to our easy seashell watercolor painting tutorial. Painting seashells is so fun. There are lots of colors, shapes, and sizes of shells that are out there. It brings to mind fond memories of beachcombing to find the perfect shells. I love that you can draw and paint them your own way and it's great observational drawing as well as painting skill practice. Today, you'll need a few art supplies, namely, round watercolor brushes, waterproof pens, a pencil, watercolor paint, and watercolor paper. When it's time to paint, you'll want to grab a cup of clean water and a paper towel or clean rag. Using a few seashells on hand or reference photos are great for growing your observational drawing skills. Today, I'm doing a combination of looking at actual seashells and reference photos for the different varieties that I don't have on hand. The first thing I've done in my sketch is lay down an initial light pencil sketch of the basic geometric shapes that best represent the shells I'm about to draw. Some of the other shells I'm drawing have a combination of circles, diamonds, or ovals. I draw what I see and I block out these shapes first with quick, light lines. Take a moment to look at the shells you'll be drawing today. What basic shapes do you see the shell having? What you see me doing right now is applying a little more pressure to my pencil and taking my time to record smaller curves, bumps, ridges, and other small details that I notice. I'm not gonna get stuck on being really realistic, but doing it my way with what I see. The video is sped up, but this drawing took a little longer to create take your time and enjoy the process. Here are all the shells I'm going to be painting today. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Next comes a waterproof pen. These say right on the label that they are waterproof, so I stick to these. You can test out different pens to see what works best for you. Just like a pencil, I can apply heavier and lighter pressures on my pen to get thinner and thicker lines. I make my lines thinner where it's lighter and a little thicker where I want more weight or where it's going to be darker on my page. Since the sketch will become a painting, I'm not too worried about adding any shading at this point, just outlines with a little character. They don't need to be perfectly overlapped with my pencil strokes. And you can see as I go, I add a little bit more flair, curving my lines, exaggerating details, and keeping it loose and flowy. When I'm done sketching, I'll go ahead and get out my paints and painting supplies. I'm going to use colors that are opposite on the color wheel to create contrast. Today, I'm using orange and blue, but splitting the orange, so I use red, orange, and yellow. 
On a separate page, I've experimented with the colors that I've chosen. I first made little samples of just the pure color. Next, I tried a technique called wet into wet, where I apply clean water to the paper and wet paint into that. The other technique I tried was adding salt to the pure color paint to show more textures. The salt that I am using is very flaky and coarse. It's really great salt for watercolor painting. In this time-lapse painting, I'm using the painting techniques I practiced and experimenting with color. Blue for the shadows and mixing in a bit of yellow and red-orange to create neutral colors. And here's the final result. I go ahead and let it dry to see where the colors absorb into the paper. The final thing I will do is mix up a darker turquoise and with a fine brush, I go in and add a little tiny bit right in the darkest shadows. It really makes the subject pop to have dark and light tones. I'm proud with the way these turned out, and I hope you are too. I really love how the combinations of colors, lines, and textures make each one of these studies unique in its own way. Experimenting with colors, painting techniques, as well as different drawing and painting supplies can really help amp up your observational drawing skills. Thanks for painting with me today.